Hello, this is Justin at The Tech Train here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own avatar generator that you can upload to a website and share online or share locally on a network, and it allows you to generate millions, even billions of different avatars. This particular one here generates robots, but I'll show you how you can create your own avatar generator using whatever images you like. I'll also show you how you can download this avatar generator and all the files that go with it uh, later on in the video. Let's have a look at how this works first of all. So you see the web page I've got, uh, I've got my little character in the middle there and a generate button. And whenever I click this generate button, you can see it redraws a new character. How many different possible avatars are there? Well, with this particular generator, there are 37 trillion, 238 billion, 750 million. Now, I use this for uh, my students at school, so they will perhaps for Google Classroom or for whatever else, create an avatar, and they will click this until they like a particular robot that they like, and then they simply right click on it and save that image. And when they save that image, it saves the avatar, this whole square image here, as a JPEG. And they can then use that as an avatar or whatever. So clearly with 37 trillion, 238 billion, 750 million different possible combinations, each student is going to have their own robot avatar and I'm not going to have too many repeats. So if we were to sit here and generating a new robot every single second for 24 hours a day, it would actually take 1,180,833 years before you would see two robots the same. I'll just tell you now, I'm not gonna do that in this video. So I promise you, I'm not gonna sit here going through every single possible combination. What I am gonna do though, is show you how to do this. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need is a way of building a very simple web page and more importantly, writing the code, particularly the JavaScript code that we need. Now, if you have your own program for doing this, that's fine. But if this is new for you, uh, here's my recommendation. And this is what I'm going to be using in this video. So this is Visual Studio Code. So it's a very simple uh, editor that you can use for code. Uh, it's available for both Mac and Windows and Linux as well, in fact. So if you go to the uh, website here, I'll link this under the video. So it's code.visualstudio.com and then you download this and this will open up the program. And here you can see the code which I will be going through. I'm not gonna write all of this code in the video because some of it becomes fairly repeated, uh, but you can see this is the basic code for the web page I've just shown you. Um, so it's quite clear to read and everything. Uh, we'll go through that in a moment. That's the first thing you're going to need. The second thing that you're going to need is some way of drawing the images. Now, the images I've got here, you can see I've got uh, various antenna, <clears throat> I've got ears, eyes, heads, necks, mouths, uh, noses, all these different bits and pieces. These are all the components which I'm using. Um, this is for creating a robot, of course. So you can very easily use this method to create anything you like, whether it be a random book cover or a random person. Uh, so it's up to you how you use this method, but I, I'm sticking with robots largely because they're quite easy to draw, um, boxes and shapes that are fairly straightforward. I've used Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, to create these images but you might not have that program. And I make sure that as far as possible, everything that I use here or I show how to use is free. So I'm gonna show you a way that you can actually draw these vector images for free. One thing that is important though, is that these images are transparent. In other words, you can see that the, uh, the shape here, the, in this case, the black, uh, the uh, green area here, uh, that is the only part of the image, the black, 
part that you see here, which of course doesn't show up in the thumbnails, is transparent. So these are all PNG files, transparent PNG files, um, and that is important because of course we're layering those over one another. Um, so when you look at these different parts, each of the eyes, the ears and so forth, you don't get to the big white background, of course, in front of them. So that's uh, really important. So you will need a way of doing that. Let's have a look at a possibility. So again, I'll put a link underneath, but this is boxy-svg.com. So this is the website here. We can click launch app, opens up in a new tab. And it's very, very straightforward to use. So for example, on the left-hand side, I'm gonna grab the rectangle and draw a rectangle out for the body, like that. Um, and then we can color this however we like. So by selecting it and then clicking on the paintbrush on the right-hand side, we can start to fill that. Let's do that with a nice bright red. You do have gradients and other things there as well. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this Quad Bezier tool here, which is a bit like the pen tool in uh, Illustrator. I'm gonna click on these two corners like that, click part way across there. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is click on the select and color that slightly darker. And that creates that sort of shadow effect that you could see that I was using uh, in some of these. So for example, like that with a shadow effect. Um, so it's as simple as that to create these images. Uh, once you've created these images, you can uh, save them. So we can uh, save or export to disk. You will need to sign in, uh, but when you do sign in, it is free. So there's no cost involved in this. When you export it, you will need to make sure that it is a PNG and the background, you have that as transparent. That simply means taking this slider and dragging it right to the end. Doesn't really matter what color you have here, uh, as long as your transparency slider is slid right to the right hand side. So PNG and transparent. The same applies, of course, if you're using Illustrator or any other program as well. Make sure that it's a PNG and a transparent background. The other thing that's really important is to make sure the size of your image is always the same. So for the example that I've used uh, here, I actually have this set at 400 pixels by 400 pixels. Now you could very easily have one that's much smaller than that. So obviously, if we were to save this image, that image is gonna be saved as a 400 by 400 image like that. Uh, but if you wanted it to be smaller so that you have you know, little tiddly ones, it doesn't really matter because they rescale anyway when you're using them as avatars, but you could have smaller ones if you want, or indeed you could have them much, much bigger. You could have them twice the size or whatever. But it is important to be consistent. So what I will do for all of mine, as I did, is set the image width and height here at 400. So whatever you decide to use, make sure that you're always setting the width and the height in whatever program you're using the same every time. And that will make it much, much easier to make sure that you're layering all these different parts in the correct location. So whenever I uh, click generate, you can see that the eyes, the mouth, the nose, the ears, the antenna, the neck, the body, whatever, they're all in the right place. Um, so we've not got any ears floating off somewhere. We've got no antenna or neck that are detached from the rest of the body. It all connects up nicely. I will show you how to do that, how to sort that out, but that's something that is important. So uh, we've got that export there, and then we can simply click the export button at the bottom. And there we are, we've exported that image and that image now is a 400 by 400 image. It has a transparent background, even though it looks black, it is a transparent background. And then what we really need to do is to make sure that these are saved. So what you can see that I've done here is I've got, uh, let's look at the uh, heads because they're probably a bit easier to see. So I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see these. So what I've done is I've named them head one. PNG, then head two, head three, head four. That's really important because our code will rely upon two things. One, that the first part of the name is the part of the body, the identifier for that. So we've got ears, eyes, head, mouth. And again, obviously, if you're using this generator to create something completely different, like a book cover or whatever, um, then whatever part that is, whether it be title, spine, uh, background, foreground, 
you know, whatever, um, you have those named. That's the first thing. And the second thing our code will do is to randomly choose a number. Now, in this case, I've got eight heads and they're named one to eight. So for the head code, it will randomly choose a number between one and eight, and it will take that number, add it to the word head, and then add .png to the end of it, and that tells it which of these images to grab. So you can go to town making as many of these as you like, and of course it's very easy if you want to, in the future, to add more parts and just simply make one small change to your code to tell it now how many more parts there are available. So once you've um, downloaded your code and you've got your boxy.svg or whatever you're using to create illustrator images with transparent backgrounds, we are ready to begin. So let's have a look now at the code that we need to create the basic web page. So as I said earlier on, if you don't want to be bothered with going through creating all of this code yourself, you just want to download the resource and perhaps watch this video just so that you can understand how the code works, allowing you to make changes and customize it more easily yourself, that's absolutely fine. Some people will want to work along with me and see how it's built line by line and do it themselves. Um, but if you just want to download the resource, the link is underneath this video. So you can go onto that uh, page there. Um, there's a modest um, amount of money, I think it's about £3.50, uh, just to uh, buy me a cup of coffee to say thank you very much. So that's always really appreciated. So um, if you click the link down below, you can download the resource for about £3 or so, buy me a cup of coffee, say thank you, and there you are, you've got it. Um, so. Either do that or watch me build this code. So first of all then, we're in the Visual Studio code and what I've created there is a new file which I'm going to have as the web page. So although the generator is written in a programming language called JavaScript, which allows us to create this interactive content for a web page, it is a web page and so we need to squash the JavaScript into a normal web page. So this is the basic code that we need for our normal web page. So this is going to be the, the, the HTML code, we call this, so that we can see the different um, parts of the page. We begin with the HTML code at the top, which tells the computer this is a website, this is a web page, it's written in this language, HTML. And you can see at the bottom we have this slash HTML. So in this programming language, we use these what we call tags. So a tag that's in these angled brackets means we're beginning this section and a forward slash and that tag in the angled brackets means we've finished this section. So the HTML and slash HTML simply tell the computer where the web page code begins and where the web page code ends. So they wrap the whole thing. We've then got two parts to a web, a web page. We have the head section and the body section. And just like you, assuming that you're built reasonably normally, we have the head at the top and the body underneath. The head generally is all the stuff that the user doesn't see, the behind the scenes stuff. So a lot of our code will be there, for example. The one thing that I've put in here is a title, and that's the title which appears at the top of the web page. So you can see here on this example, we've got Avatar Maker in the tab at the top, and that's the title. So if we want that to appear, we can write that in here. And of course, again, you can change that to whatever you want. Notice again how we have the title tag and the slash title tag to show us where that section begins and ends. At the moment, that's the only thing we've got in our head section. So then we have a look at the body. And at the moment, there's nothing in there apart from this section. And this is a div tag or a division tag. It uh, divides the page up into different sections and allows us to have a style for each section. I actually only want one style, and that's simply to make sure that everything is centered in the page. You'll see here that my title, the actual uh, avatar itself, 
and this button underneath are all centered, no matter how big or small we make the page. So to do that, we just say, okay, let's have a, a section, a division section in our web page, and the alignment is going to be center. Notice how the um, word center there is spelt the American way, the US way, with the ER rather than the British way of RE. And then that's the end of it, so we do a slash div. Now we're going to put some of our code in the head section and that will be just after the title but before this slash head. So some of our code is going to go in here and most of the rest of the code will go in the body either before this division section if it's just simply getting things ready or inside the division if it's stuff the user is going to see. So if you want to uh, open up your Visual Studio code or whatever program you're using and just create this basic web page but one thing that you'll need to do is to make sure you save this code as a web page. So we don't just simply uh, save this as a text file, we have to save this as a web page. How do we do that? Well, once you've written this code out, you'll need to go to File and then Save As. And what you're going to call it is, I'm calling this step one because it is step one, but you can obviously call this index or generator or avatar or whatever you want. But what you'll notice there in the file name is I've written dot html. So write the name. If you're not sure, just call it avatar or generator. I'd stick with a single word uh, to keep things simple with the final web address name, but write that out but make sure you put dot, a full stop, and then HTML. And then when you click save, what you'll have is a web page like this. So you can see that's what I've just saved there. And if I double click this to open it, you'll see that I have a web page. It opens up in whatever your default browser is. I'm using Edge uh, at the moment. And you can see that there's nothing on it at the moment, of course, but at the top, we have got this title, Avatar Maker, which I did choose. And if we right click and view source, you can see all the code there that we've just written. So if I'd like to have a go at creating that bit of code there, or simply skip ahead and see the next section if you wish, um, and uh, test out to make sure that your web page opens in your browser. So now that we've got our web page created with our HTML tags, our head section and our body section, it's time to start putting in that code. Now we're going to put this code in the head section. It doesn't really matter where, uh, but I tend to prefer to keep the title at the top and then make a little bit of space and we're going to start putting our code in between this title tag here, but very importantly, before this slash head. Don't forget that that tag there means the end of the head section. So we need to put our code somewhere inside here. So the first thing that we need to do is to tell the computer that this is no longer going to be written in HTML. This is going to be written in JavaScript. So we use the opening tag there, script. Again, you can see how it's written in those angled brackets. So start off with that. And just as with all the other tags in HTML, we will want to have a slash script just afterwards. So you can see now we've got this script open, script close, and both of these appear before this head section. So we're going to be putting quite a lot of code in between these two sections. Remember, if you want to copy along with me, that's absolutely fine. However, if you want to uh, just say thanks for uh, my time and buy me a cup of coffee, you can click the link underneath the video uh, and download all of the files here, a fully working copy with all of the images, everything that goes with it, um, and, uh, and use it as you wish. So let's start off then with the first thing. What we need to do is to make sure that as soon as the web page is loaded, the code runs. So we uh, run the code every time the web page either is loaded or is reloaded. So we're going to create what we call a function. Now this function is called window.onload. And that means that as soon as the window, this web page is loaded, it will then do whatever this code says. So we have these open brackets here at the end, and then what we call an open brace. So this uh, curly bracket here, which you can get by holding down shift 
and the key just after the letter P on your keyboard, uh, that allows us now to start adding in some code. Now, for this code, we need to understand what files we actually have in our folder. Now, I'm not going to go drawing all these files. I've shown you what program you can use. I've shown you how to do those. So I'm simply going to cheat and copy across some of the files I already have and move them across into the folder. So here is the folder. I've saved this step two as a separate web page here. So I've got this as step two.html here, but this is the folder that I'm using. And it's really important that when you are building this, the web page is in the same folder as the images. So we're going to have one folder that contains the web page you've just saved and any images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy across three of the heads which I created before. So I've got head one, head two, and head three. And remember that the file names have to have two things, the name of the part of the body or the avatar or image, whatever it might be, in this case, head, and then without a space, the number. So this is number one, number two, number three. It doesn't matter what the order is, as long as they have those two parts. And also remember that these have to be PNGs because that supports transparency. So anything that's outside of the actual image we want will be transparent. So now that I've got the head, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the code I need for that. So to begin with, I'm going to have a variable, uh, which is something that can uh, contain a single bit of information. So I we'll use the word there, and I'm going to call this uh, robot head. I'm not going to use the word head simply because head is obviously a code word. You can see it in here. It shouldn't cause a problem, uh, but I prefer to avoid using obvious code words like head or body simply because it could be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to put the word robot before each of the parts of the body. So robot head, and I'm going to say this variable is simply going to be um, an image. We say new image, and we'll need brackets after it and a semicolon. Now we need to say, right, we've got this variable, it's going to have a head in it, but which one? So we need now to be able to choose one of the heads. Now remember that we've got three heads here. If you've got a different number, then you'll need to use a different number in the next code that I write. So we have to simply say how many there are to choose from. So I'm going to say now I need another variable, and this is going to be the robot head num, so which number are we choosing? And we use a built-in math function. I use floor, so we are rounding down, so we have a whole number. And we use the math.random function to be able to get a random number. And this is where we say, how many heads have we got in this case? I've got three, so I'm going to put the number three in there. And then we close those brackets, add one, because otherwise it starts from zero, and then end that with a semicolon. So that line will tell uh, the computer, uh, okay, here's uh, three possible numbers, a one or two or three, pick one. And that number will be stored in a variable called robot head num. Um, now we need to actually have the name of the file. And the name of the file will of course be the word head plus the number that we've just chosen, which will be stored in the variable robot head num, and then plus the dot png. So we need those three parts. So we have another variable here, and this is going to be the robot head name, so the name of the head, and that's going to be the word head in speech marks, plus the robot head nums, which number are we having, plus, and then in speech marks, dot png. Close our speech marks and end the line with a semicolon. So now we've got the name of it, we can finally tell the computer what is the final source of this. So we say that this uh, robot, we've got this variable up here, robot head. Um, so we need to say, okay, we've got that robot head, it knows it's gonna be an image, but now where is that image? Well, now we know because robot head um, dot SRC, so the source of that image is simply the robot head name which we've built using this line here. Again, end the line with a semicolon, and there we are. 
So that block of code there will create a file name in robothead.source, a file name for an image which will have a random name of either head1.png, head2.png, head3.png. And of course, if you then add more heads after that, the only thing you need to do is to change that number there. If you want to put a little note to remind yourself, do two forward slashes at the end of the line and then say change uh, three to whatever number of heads, head files you have. Not how many heads you have, how many head files you have. So that's the, uh, the first section there. So now we've got the random file name, now it's time to tell the computer, right, we know what image it is, let's now draw it. So what we need to do now is every time we randomly choose a file name, we need to tell the computer, okay, go and get that file name and draw it or load it up and put it onto the web page. So we need another function here. So we're going to say uh, robot head, so what we've just had that image, dot on load. In other words, when the file has loaded, when it's actually got that image. It's probably not gonna take that long to get that image from the server, but of course, if some of the images are fairly large, we're doing this a lot, there's a lot of demand on it, it could take a fraction of a second. And you don't want to say to the computer, right, put this picture of head two on the screen, before it's actually got a copy of that image from the server, because then you're gonna get a blank space where the head should be. So we say to the computer, right, once that particular image, head2.png, once that has loaded, we need then to draw it. So we don't try and draw it before it's loaded. So in this function, we open and close the uh, braces, the curly braces, and we're gonna use a robot, uh, sorry, we're gonna use a function that we haven't made yet. We're actually going to make this function later on, but it's a function called build robot. And that will simply tell the computer basically which order to put all these objects in, because of course some of these are going to have to come before others. For example, the head is clearly gonna to have to be drawn fairly earlier on, although the neck is actually drawn first because that goes slightly behind the head. Uh, you can't always tell, but if you look, uh, you'll see some heads or some necks are taller or shorter than others, and yet they always join. And that's because the neck is a little bit taller than it sometimes needs to be. I've just simply overlapped them. But you can see that the nose is always in front of the mouth, um, that the antenna and the ears are always behind the head. So that function will, uh, this function build robot, will simply tell the computer what order to build them in. So although we've called that function, we're not going to use it just yet. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do now is to create what we call a canvas. Now the canvas is simply this part of the screen here where we can draw a picture. So that's what we call a canvas, just like in art, I suppose. So we're gonna use the canvas, and what I'm gonna do here now, well, let's, let's build that build robot function. So function uh, build robot, open up the square, uh, the uh, rounded brackets, and again, whenever we create a function, we always open up those curly braces. Uh, so inside here then, we're going to create a variable called canvas, and that is going to be okay, document dot get element by ID, and this element, this part of the screen is called canvas, close our brackets, end the line with a semicolon. So then we use ver ctx, this basically shows how we're going to um, ensure that the, the images are drawn on the canvas, how they, they are created. So canvas dot, don't worry too much about this bit, uh, context, oops, context. Um, and this is a 2D image, basically. You can create 3D images, we're not gonna be doing that. Keep it nice and simple. Um, and then we have the size of the canvas. So remember that I said that it's important to make sure you choose the size that you want. In this case, um, I'm using 400 pixels, but if you want one that's smaller or bigger, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't even have to be square, of course. It could be uh, any shape you want, although avatars generally do use square proportions, simply because then if, like for example, Google Classroom or Google Docs, um, the avatar is, um, 
in a sim it's in a circle basically so if it was a, a rectangular avatar then it could either get squashed or cropped and that wouldn't look so good if you do change these numbers here then obviously you're going to have to change them when you create your drawings so as i showed you earlier on if you're in uh, boxy or whatever for example these dimensions here would need to be the same as whatever number you choose your canvas size to be Right, so after we've created this build robot function and created the canvas, it's time to now add each part of the robot to that canvas uh, and make sure that it's centered and in the right place. So I've only got one body part so far, that's the head. So we'll put the code in for this. But this line of code that I'm gonna write now will be repeated for every single body part apart from one little change and that will be how high the body part needs to go. So if we look at the uh, generator here, you can see that everything is centered. So the nose, the eyes, the mouth, the neck, the body, the antenna, the ears, they're all centered. That's one thing that uh, this line of code will do. But the second thing will it, it will do is say, well, how high will that need to be? So for example, the antenna there will need to be fairly close to the top the ears obviously further down, the eyes further down, mouth and nose further down still, and the neck right at the bottom. So um, this will be to some extent trial and error, uh, more error than trial to begin with, but you'll get the idea, it's not too difficult. So what we're gonna write is CTX, which uh, we've obviously, that's the name of the variable we created up here. So CTX is the canvas. So it just saves us a bit of coding time here. So CTX dot uh, draw image. So this is going to be the robot head. So that's the name of the file that we used. And then to make sure it's centered, what I'm gonna do is open up two round brackets, take 400, which is obviously the width of the canvas, subtract from that the robot head dot width, so however wide that image is, and then divide that by two. So that will actually give us um, make sure it's centered horizontally. So by taking the width of whatever part of the image it is, even if it's not 400 pixels, whatever width it is, it will then work out how much gap to put either side, that's the first thing. Um, and then we need a comma and the number of pixels down from the top. Now this is a 400 by 400 canvas. Uh, in terms of the vertical alignment, we start at the top with zero and the bottom of course will be 400. So how far down from the top? If I was to put zero in here, then this image would be flush right up against the top of this canvas. I don't want that, I want a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna put in 50 there. And then don't forget at the end of that line, we need our semicolon. Um, so that then um, has the code for producing it. We've got our closing brace there for the function build robot. Make sure you have this other closing brace down here. This one closes that function we opened right at the top of this script section called window.onload. So this open brace here says, right, when the window loads, do all these things. So set up the variables here, have a function for each individual, uh, for, for the uh, built in the robot, um, and the main build robot function here. So you can see each of these has open and then close braces. So this one closes the whole of the window.onload function. And then just after that, we have our slash script, so the end script section. So make sure you save this. I'm gonna save that as step two. Obviously you'll just simply save that as whatever file you're doing. And you might at this point think, let's go and have a look, see what happens then. So if I was to open up this web page here, step two, nothing, it's blank. That's disappointing. Where's my random head? Well, of course the thing is at the moment we've put all our code in the head section of our web page, not the head of the robot, but the actual web page head section. And nothing that we put in here really will get displayed. So at the moment, we've talked about uh, in this line here, uh, saying right, the canvas is going to be whatever part of this document has the identity of canvas. Well, there is no part to the document called canvas. We haven't made it yet because all those parts are made in the body section of our website. The body section of the website is where the things you normally see in a web page are included. 
So whether it be text or images or whatever, the things you actually see are generally included in the body section. So we need to put some code in here now in order to be able to make sure that our uh, robot can be seen. So let's have a go now at putting in the body code. So there's only a couple of things we need. It's not a lot of code here. We've done most of the work so far. But what we are going to do is to um, put all of this code in between these division tags here, the div tags. Uh, this is the open and this slash div close. And anything we put in between these two tabs uh, will be centered. So they'll be appearing nicely in the middle of our web page. So the first thing we're going to do is create the canvas, which up here we said to the computer, go and look for something called canvas. So the reason, of course, we can't see our robot is we haven't made it. So what we'll do is we'll open up a little tag here and we'll call this canvas and we'll say canvas ID. So the name of this canvas is canvas being really original. And um, then I'm going to put a couple other bits in here as well. So I'm going to say that the style of it uh, will equal um, a border. So it'll have a border to it. You don't have to include this, but I think it looks a, a little bit nicer. I'm going to have a, a five point border, so five pixels. I'll have this as a solid line and I'll choose black as the color. So hash zero, 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 zero. Six zeros there for black. If you want a different color, then obviously this is just a hex color. Uh, semicolon to finish that and close our speech marks and that's all we need for the canvas tag so we simply do the close the angled close bracket and what you'll see that I've got here in Visual Studio code it's automatically said all right uh, we can do the slash canvas tag for you if you're using Visual Studio code that will be put in automatically for you if not sorry you're gonna have to type that out so once you've got your um, canvas ID line of code and you've closed that angle bracket, then there's another open angle bracket and slash canvas to close that canvas. So that's the uh, line there. I'll just close that up onto one line, keep it neat. Now we've got the canvas, but what you'll see that I did in the original one is I had the canvas here and then a bit of a gap underneath it and then this generate button, which I can click and get all the different uh, robots. So I want to put this gap in here and then the generate. So to do the gap, I'm simply going to use a break tab, which is uh, BR in these tags. Um, this is an unusual one. We don't need a forward slash on this one. Um, so I'm going to put two of these in here to, to do a double line break like that. And then underneath that, we'll have our button. So we open another uh, tag for this and a button. So that creates a button. Uh, what's it going to do? So on click, if I can spell click. Uh, we're simply going to say equals window dot locations, the name of the web page we're on now, dot reload. And then we open those brackets because that's actually a function. Uh, and then semicolon to finish that and close our speech marks. Um, and then we'll close that tag. We've got the forward slash button. So that's in there for us. I'll just put a space there so you can see those two parts. There's our opening button, there's our closing button, but between these two tags, so between the closing angle bracket of this half and the opening angle bracket of the end slash button, we need to put in what word we want to appear on the button itself. So I'm gonna put in the word generate, exclamation mark, there we are, but you can put in whatever you want, of course. Right, so I'm going to save this now. So again, you can just simply file save, but I'm going to save this as step three and replace that. And then let's open up that. So step three, open it up. Um, right, what have I forgotten? I've missed something off. Uh, let's just check what's missing. Uh, robot head, any canvas. All oh, right, yes, ID canvas. Um, I forgot to put the equals in there. <laughs> canvas ID equals. Can't just say canvas ID canvas. Canvas ID is equal to the name canvas. So there we are, just pop that equals in there. And then let's save that again and reload it. So let's uh, try that again. And there we go. So we've now got the canvas appearing here. That's the border around the outside. It's loaded up the pink uh, head. Uh, that was number two, I believe. 
and we're going to add generate button. And every time I click this generate, we're going to get a random picture. Now with only two, uh, sorry, three different heads, of course, we're not going to get very much variation. You can see that I'm clicking it and sometimes I will get the same one two, three, four times in a row. So the more of these images you've got, the better. Now, if I was to add some more of these into the folder, so let's say that I'm going to go for uh, heads four, five and six and drop those in there. So now I've got heads one, two, three, four, five, six. And I was to now refresh that page and reload it. What you'll see is none of them will appear. No matter how many times I click, it won't appear. Why won't it appear? Well, because if we go back up to the top here and we look at this line in the uh, just after the windows dot on load, this is the one that says pick a random number for the robot head between one and three and uh, and then add that number to the word head and then add dot PNG to the end of it. And that gives us head two dot PNG or whatever it might be. So if you do add more of that particular image, in this case heads, is to change this number. I've put three more in there, so I've got six of them so far. So I'm going to change that to six, save that. And now if we load that up, we should see some of the other ones. There we are. So four, five and six, that's number four. Yellow was five, or well, there it was, and six was purple. Let's see if we can get, oh, there it is. Six was purple. So we're getting six different heads. So we've now got a random head generator because that just shows us one part of the body. And what we need to do next is to include a second part of the body and have that also randomized, loaded up and then put into the right location. So let's add some eyes to this head now and see how we do that. So if we're going to add another body part, in this case, we're going to add the eyes. We need, of course, to draw them. So whatever method you're using, whether it be the Boxy-SVG website I showed you earlier or Illustrator or whatever other image editing program or package you're going to use, uh, you can create a variety of eyes. Uh, again, if you don't want to bother with drawing all these out, you can click the link under this video and download all of the images that I've created. There's about 71 different images, different body parts for robots uh, with all the antenna, with the eyes, the heads, the neck, the mouth, the nose, all that kind of stuff. So you can download that by clicking the link under this video just for the price of a cup of coffee, which is very much appreciated, believe me. Um, so I'm simply going to copy across three pairs of eyes, first of all, that I drew earlier on. Uh, so there we are. I've got eyes one, eyes two, eyes three. Remember, we must have two parts to each file name. So the body part name, in this case, eyes, and then the number one, then the number two, then the number three. Don't leave any gaps. Don't have one, two and four, uh, because sometimes that will mean that you'll end up with a blank eye. Um, so I'm going to put three in to begin with and put them in the same folder as the heads and everything else. Right. We need to do three things then now with our code. So if we have a look at our code, we can see that the three bits are here. We have a section at the top in our head section after script that says pick a random number and use that number to create a file name for the head. Clearly we want to do the same thing for the eyes. So we'll do that first. After that, if we come down here, you can see that we have a robot head on load. So once that file name has been chosen and it's been loaded, once it's been loaded, we've got to copy that picture from the server. We can then say, go and build the robot. So we make sure it's drawn. And then down here, we need to then have another copy of this line that says, right, once we've loaded it, we're building the robot. Where do we want it? So, you know, we're going to center it again, but how high? Clearly the eyes are going to be a lot lower down than the head, but we'll play around with that. So let's do those three bits then. And there will be a lot of copying and pasting here, so you don't need to do all of it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just space this out a little bit here so we can see we've got four lines of code here for the robot head. And what I really strongly recommend you do is to put some comments. 
So I'm going to do two forward slashes. You see it goes green in this. This is just a comment. A comment is ignored by the computer, but it's helpful for us. And I'm going to write the word head. And I'm going to copy those now five lines of code underneath and change that comment to eyes. And I would suggest you keep on doing this so that you get it really, really organized. If you do buy a copy of this code, if you download this from the link underneath, uh, what you will see is code that is beautifully commented all the way down. You can see uh, it's all structured like that with comments uh, that make it really, really easy to see everything that's going on. Um, so where am I now? Step four. Oh, that's where I want now. This one. There we are. Um, so we've got the uh, eyes section, but clearly we need to change everything that says head. So wherever we say head in this section, we need to change that to eyes. So we need a variable called robot eyes, which will be a new image. Uh, the robot eyes number, so whatever number we choose. Here, of course, we have to make sure that we put the number in that corresponds to the number of pairs of eyes we have. Currently, I just have three, so I'll put three in there. Uh, then the robot head name will need to be changed to robot eyes name. And of course, the name of the file is eyes. Obviously, again, if you're doing something like a random book cover generator or whatever it might be, um, you would change all these to whatever file names, whatever parts are relevant to you. Uh, plus robot head num will be changed to robot eyes num. And then finally, robot head source becomes robot eyes source equals robot head name will be changed to equals robot eyes name. So we haven't changed the code originally. We've still got the one up here for head, but we now have our copy of that changed to eyes. So that uh, creates the random number, the random file name. Under here, we have this little function, which says once the robot head image is loaded, build the robot. We're going to take a copy of that. Again, what I'm going to do is put a comment. So we say head loaded. And I'm going to copy that, paste a copy of the whole thing underneath, and then say eyes loaded. Now, you might look at this and say, well, why do we have to keep on building the robot? And I found trial and error and practice in the past that if you don't build the robot each time an individual uh, element is loaded, you can sometimes end up with bits missing. Uh, if the server's very busy or if images are a bit larger uh, or whatever it might be, sometimes I did find little bits and pieces would go missing. So it's not a very big function. It doesn't matter that you might call it six, seven, eight times. Uh, so it just makes sure that everything is visible. So eyes loaded. So again, we need to change the word head to eyes in this case. So robot eyes dot uh, on load function, build robot, that's the same function. So that's that bit done. And then finally, in the major function here, build robot. So we have the code that builds the canvas. We're not going to touch that. That stays the same. It's this line here, CTX dot draw image. That will need to copy. Again, what I'm going to do is just put a little comment. So draw eyes, oh, sorry, draw head, that one. Um, and here we need to think about the order that we're going to put the parts of the image. So I want to draw the head first and then the eyes so that they appear in front of the head. If I was to draw the eyes first and then the head, we'd have the eyes appearing and then the head would appear in front of the eyes. And of course, we wouldn't see the eyes. So here we have to simply make sure that these lines of code we write are in the order we want to see them from bottom to top. So the first of these lines will be the item that's at the bottom, at the back, and the last one, the one at the front. So to draw the eyes, let's just change that to eyes. There we go. We're going to say uh, draw image robot eyes. Um, and it's going to be the width of the robot eyes file, whatever that is, divided by two. And then this number 50, we're going to have to change. I'm going to leave it at 50 at the moment so we can see what happens. Right, let's save this file now. So we're going to save this. I'll save this as step four, just so that you can uh, see the steps, but you obviously keep that file name the same. Let's open up our folder. Where is it? There we are. And open up step four. 
So there we are, we can see that we've got the eyes and the face. If I click generate, you can see that each time we're getting a different um, face and a different pair of eyes. So we're getting some randomization. The problem, of course, is that the eyes are too high up. And you can see that we said plus 50. That's this gap from the top to the top of this image here. That's 50 pixels. The eyes we want to be further down. I would say probably about the same gap again. So if that's 50 pixels down, if we have another 50 pixels, that brings us to about here. And that should be the top of the eyes. So let's just um, try that. So let's go back to our code and change the height of the eyes, the top of the eyes from 50 to 100. Let's save that. And then we'll reopen that. And there you are, I can see the eyes now are a little bit more in the right place. And each time I click this generate button, we're getting a different combination of eyes and head. And if I wanted to add more eyes, so I've only got three pairs of eyes there, let's um, add some more. So I'm gonna add eyes four, five, and six to this folder, there we are. Uh, I'll need to go back into my code, back up to the top, and where I've got this line saying that the robot eyes num variable will be a random number, not between one and three, but now between one and six. So if I now save that, um, and I can load that up, and I'm now going to get six different pairs of eyes. So with six heads and six pairs of eyes, six times six, we've got 36 different possible combinations of um, our robot. At this point, I don't really need to go back over anymore. I'm sure you've got the idea. Um, if I just show you the final code that we'd need here uh, for this robot, the code that I used for the uh, final uh, avatar, and the one that you would be able to buy and download if you want to, you can see that I've got exactly the same code as I've just built there. All I've got here is this block of code repeated for the neck, then the head, then the eyes. Uh, it doesn't matter what order this goes in at all. This is, this is irrelevant as far as the order is concerned. Um, ears and then antenna. So I've got that. Uh, then I've got this when each part is loaded, go and build the robot. So again, I've got the build robot when the neck image is loaded, when the head is, uh, image is loaded, go and build the robot, when the eyes are loaded, build the robot and so forth. And then if I scroll down, again, yeah, we've got the canvas being built here. And then underneath that, uh, I've got this CTX line. And these are from back to front. So we build the neck first, then the ears and antenna. So they're all appearing behind the head. Then we draw the head in front of those. And then on top of the head, we do the eyes, the mouth and the nose. So it's important that it is that way around. The only other thing I've added is this bit of code here, which adds a random background color. So I've got here three variables, one for red, one for green, one for blue. And these variables um, are between uh, 100 and 255. So it's not completely uh, black, it's not too dark. Uh, so we have uh, three different possible colors there. And then we are going to take those three numbers and put them into a variable called BG color, and it'll be a, um, a hex number. So we put the hash there and convert those to a string, hex string, and then we use this ctx.fill style equal the background color. So that's the canvas. So the canvas fill style or background color will be that background color there. Uh, and that just gives us a, a random color behind the avatar. So when I click generate now, you can see that I get these random colors at the back, not too dark, uh, but uh, they just help to stand out a little bit. And it's that combination of parts uh, that allow us to uh, have the um, different parts of the robot appear and the background color, which really creates unique little avatars uh, and creates millions of them. It is ridiculous how quickly you can actually build up a library of parts which allow you to have that many uh, combinations, quite startling. Um, so there we are. So that is how to create your own JavaScript avatar generator. And of course, you can use this method to create any kind of generator you want, whether it be a castle generator, a book cover generator, um, a people generator, um, a shoe style generator. I mean, honestly, whatever you can think of um, that would generate random combinations of images and layer those one on top of the other, that 
uh, this method here will work. It's quite simple, it's quite straightforward, um, it's easy to adapt, it's easy to edit, it's easy to add to, and then you're left with a simple folder which you can simply upload to a website, um, link to your HTML file, whatever it might be, and there you go, it works. No plugins, no fancy stuff, just simply upload, link, and go. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found that useful. If you did find this uh, useful, please do give this video a like, that would make a massive difference, really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, then do click the subscribe button before you go, and don't forget to uh, click that bell icon so that you're notified when a new video goes live. Uh, if you have any comments or any questions, then do please uh, leave a comment in the video section below. And if you do create your own avatar generator, so you make your own files, you create your own version of this, I would love it if you could put a link in the comments section below so we can have a look at your version of this avatar generator. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Bye for now.